All right, here we are today, folks. Um, we're gonna be working on a wheel build. Um, I had a customer come in with a tandem wheel that they have worn out. Um, I've already kind of cut the spokes out and everything, but uh, the problem, as you can see, see if we can get in nice and close here. Yeah, there you go, now you can see it. Um, yeah, their brake pads wore right through the wall of the um, rim here, and then the pressure from the tire blew the rim out, you know, just blew up. Look at that. Um, so anyway, it's a tandem wheel, and uh, originally it was just this single walled alloy rim, which definitely isn't strong enough for a tandem, although it's 40 holes. So, um, you know, most wheels are going to be 32 or 36. Um, these are 40, so it's supposedly stronger until you blow the sidewall out. Um, you know, this wasn't the nicest tandem in the world. It was a KHS tandem. It's older. Um, you know, they had these white walled tires on it and everything. I'm going to reuse the tire and the tube. Why not? Um, so what we're replacing it with is a much more substantial velocity dyad rim. Um, you know, it's really hard to find a 26 inch 40 hole rim. Um, they don't make a lot of them, but Velocity does. And uh, they're one of my suppliers, so I was able to email them directly and uh, they happen to have a few in the back. And uh, we got kind of lucky. Um, now, the other weird thing about this is we have a tandem hub. Um, I have it marked left and right side. Um, just because it's kind of symmetrical like a front hub. Um, you know, it's got a really wide um, dropout. I can't remember what it measures. 147 millimeter axle width. Weird, um, but that's what this measures to. Um, which is gonna be used as part of our calculation for um, figuring out the spoke length. Um, which I have done multiple times. Got it wrong the first time. I know it's right this time, um, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. Um, I'm gonna rewalk through everything. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and build the wheel up. So um, there's your introduction. Let's start digging in. All right, we are going to start measuring this hub to calculate spoke length for this super bizarre wheel. It's not super bizarre, but it's quite different. Um, first thing we're gonna do is measure the flange diameter, which is measured center to center on opposing holes. And looks like, and I've done this a few times now, so I know for sure, but um, looks like 61 millimeters. So we write that down. Flange diameter equals 61 millimeters. Okay, now, tricky part is, the other one we gotta do is the center of the axle to each flange. Now, um, rear wheels are usually offset um, slightly um, because the drive side spokes are gonna be um, shorter than the non-drive side spokes to make room for the freewheel or the cassette or whatever you've got. Um, this tandem hub is kinda goofy and it's actually quite symmetrical um, but we're going to measure um, anyway. Um, and this is kind of a tricky eyeballer kind of thing. A um, little bit of math involved. But first thing you want to do is measure from lock nut to lock nut. And this gives you your axle width. Um, which, you know, for this bike is really weird. Um, you know, and I almost question it. This is why I tell my customers, just bring the whole bike in. I don't like it when they just bring me a wheel or whatever because... I can't double check stuff, but I'm just going to go with what he got, what he brought me. We haven't um, touched this axle. Um, so we're at 147. So the axle width is 147 millimeter. Now, to find the center of that, you divide by 2. So divided by 2 equals 73.5 millimeter. Now what we want to do is we measure the center of the flange 
So right there to this, the outside of the lock nut, you know, where it meets the dropout. And this I'm kind of eyeballing, um, you know, from above. I get right above it, one eyeball, look straight down, kind of double check and just find your best case scenario here. And I'm going with 45 and I marked this one as on the right side. So the right side is going to be 73.5 minus 45. And then the left side, all you smarties out there have already done that math. I can't do that um, in my head. I'm going to get my calculator out just to make sure. I don't like to guess a whole lot. This size 43. Okay. So, I mean, this, this one's easy. 30.5. Oh, and then I can just subtract two from that one, right? So 28.5. There, I did it in my head, folks. So we've got a right side center to flange, center to flange on the right side. So from the center of the axle to this flange is 28.5 millimeters. And then from the center of the axle to this flange is 30.5 millimeters. Um, so we're only off by a couple millimeters. Um, some of those, it's um, you know a much larger discrepancy, um, which really factors in. Now, the other thing we need to know is on this velocity dyad, 26 inch, 40 hole, um, we just Google it. Sometimes it's marked somewhere. I wasn't able to find it, like even on the label, but we're looking for the ERD which is the effective rim diameter. So um, we have 40 hole, 26 inch, ERD equals, and I looked this up and it's 535 millimeters. Okay. Um, so then what you can do is find a spoke calculator online. And if you have your ERD and then uh, the flange and then each side, um, the um, center to flange, you can get your spoke length. And um, for this one, it came out to 252 millimeter spokes. Um, I happen to know because I've already built this wheel up with the wrong size um, spokes that I think just by eyeballing it, um, we're gonna be better off with uh, 250. Um, so that's what I did. Um, you know, uh, too short, I mean, neither too short nor too long is a good idea, right? You want to be just exactly perfect. But if you're going to air, um, you know, too long is okay on a double walled rim. Um, let's see what kind of focus I can get in here. Boop. Um, if you can see how it's double walled because you know, the, the spokes are going to be poking through the nipple, the backside of the nipple inside the rim. So you're not going to run the risk of popping a tube. Um, but you can bottom out the, um, the spoke threads can be bottomed out on the nipples then if they're too long and then you don't get proper tension. Um, so that's too long. You run out of, um, run out of threads too short, you don't have enough threads to really get um, a good grip on it to um, tension things up properly and you run the risk of stripping things out. Um, you know, so, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room with your spoke length. Um, you know, I think 250 is the magic number for this wheel based on my previous mistakes. Um, and I think my mistakes are the, um, I was using an ERD of um, 537. Um, and then I also kind of messed up on this math and I think um, these numbers were incorrect the first time I plugged it in. So um, I ended up with 255 for my first time around, um, which was way too long. So, um, you know, I think I had these cut yesterday at 250 and uh, that's what I'm going with. Okay, so we have our uh, spoke length calculated. Um, 
because there wasn't a whole lot, you know, this is a pretty symmetrical hub. That means that the center of the rim is going to be kind of right in the center of the hub. Um, the spoke length's the same on both sides. I mean, it was off by like by the program I was using, by like a half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter, depending on what you were looking at. Um, it's not going to make much of a difference. So I just cut them all to the same length. Um, but when you cut spokes, um, they use a, an oil to cut the threads. And so these are kind of filthy. Um, so the first step is cleaning them. You want to degrease them good. Um, just using some speed degreaser. Really common in bike shops to use this stuff. You know, brake clean or any kind of really good aggressive um, degreaser is good. Um, and a relatively clean rag is always a good idea. I'm gonna get rid of my rubber band here. squirt for good measure. And just beat the devil out of it. All you Bob Ross fans will appreciate that one. Here's a dry rag. All right. Good and dry. Then what we do is uh, we have spoke prep. This is Wheelsmith spoke prep. Um, it actually, when you buy it, um, comes in two colors. So when you do have that uh, the, a wheel that needs two different size spokes, one for each side, you can color code them, which is really nice visual reference for when you start putting things together. Um, and this is, you know, kind of like a Loctite. You know, it's just a way to treat the threads, um, get everything pretty flat and I just dip the whole bunch in there. I got a little bit of tendonitis in my elbow, like a tennis elbow, so it's really hard to hold things still with my right hand. A little shaky. A lot of coffee today too. Gotta like that. All right. And again, I mean, that's a lot of spoke prep on there. So then you can take a, a rag, usually I use a paper towel or something that can be thrown away. And you wipe off the excess. Try not to make too much of a mess here and just keep it on the threads. Okay, and then I usually let those kind of chill out on the edge of the bench and dry out. You can help it along with some compressed air if you get impatient, which I usually do. Um, here we've got our nipples, just brass nipples, good way to go. Um, no need at all ever to use alloy nipples on a tandem wheel, I don't think. Um, even the super fancy ones. Um, yeah, so we're going to give that a chance uh, to dry out and uh, go get a cup of coffee or make a fried egg sandwich or, you know, have a taco and we'll come back and build a wheel. All right. We are back from having a sandwich. Um, and we've got our spokes here, ready to go. Um, things aren't completely dry. I don't know if they really have to be. Um, not too worried about it. Um, we've got nipples ready to go. Something we can do here since we have the tools to do so. Oop. All 
That's nice and loud for you. There. That helped. Okay. Get the things out of our pockets. We have left and right here. I always start on the right side. That's the drive side. Um, I like to have the manufacturer, if there's a label, um, on the drive side of the bike. And so the, um, the model is going to be on the non-drive. So we got right and then the velocity's up. I always start from the valve hole, which is right here, which is generally, most of the time, opposite the label. Um, on the hub, we're reusing this hub, and you can see that some of them, some of the holes are, are a little bit marred from spokes that used to be in there. Um, but I start every wheel the same, and that's with an inbound spoke, so it goes in towards the hub. Um, from the outside of the world into the hub. Um, I always start with an inbound spoke. So I find uh, an inbound hole. Um, on a brand new hub, doesn't really matter. Um, another tricky thing that some people do is if there's a um, label on the hub, you can line it up so after your twist, which we'll get to that, um, if you line the um, logo up with the valve hole then you can look through the valve hole and see the logo it's just kind of a tricky thing that people do um, this is an unmarked hub doesn't really come into play um, but it's kind of pro level stuff um, i'm going to stick the spoke through the hole grab a nipple and i thread the nipples on um, so there's about two or three um, threads showing um, and uh, that gives me enough room to play with later on in the build. I always like to have a little bit of floppiness just to make things easier. Um, now what we're gonna do is uh, go every other hole in the hub, we drop a spoke in, and then every fourth hole on the rim and uh, just lace it up all the way around. I do one side at a time, one set of spokes at a time. Um, you know, I mean, I suppose this is somewhat of a how-to um, but it's more of a just watch me work. I'll explain what I do. Um, there's lots of ways to build wheels. Um, everybody's got a different method. This is the method that works for me. I'm sure that there's faster ways because there are people that all they do is build wheels and they can lace them up and true them in like 15 minutes, which is mind boggling to me. Um, I just don't know how you do that. Not saying that they're not doing it right because I get, I've seen these wheels and like if you're a pro wheel builder and can crank them out, you're doing a really good job. I mean, I'm the same way with my tune-ups. I can tune up a bike super fast. Just because it doesn't take me that long doesn't mean it's not a good tune-up. I'm just, I've done millions of them, so it's just what I'm good at. Okay, we have gone all the way around. Um, now the next spoke, um, and this is how I do it. I know there's other people, but what I do, um, the next spoke's gonna be an outbound one on the opposite side. So on the left side, and if you look straight through, here's my first spoke. So this is my valve hole right here. There's my valve hole. Um, and this is my first spoke that I did. Um, not this hole on this side, but on the opposite side, just to the left side of this spoke, is where the next outbound spoke on the non-drive side goes, and it'll fill the hole right next to that um, first spoke. This is going to do two things. Doing it this way always lets me know that I'm going to get my twist right, so I don't have crossing spokes over the valve hole. 
That's what we try to avoid. You want to have parallel spokes um, at the valve hole. So if I did that, if I twisted that way, then this spoke crosses over the valve hole. And so it's going to be really hard to get a tool in there, um, you know, to fill air. But if you do that, once we get everything all built up, we're going to have parallel spokes at the valve hole, and then you can get a tool in there and get your chuck in there, whatever. Um, so I'm going to go all the way around and uh, just do what we did before. Every other hole on the hub flange, and then uh, just one hole to the left of the spoke that's already there. And you can hold it up like this. Um, I've kind of figured out it's one, two, three, four gets you really close. And I just kind of double check. I always check just to see, you know, two or three threads. And then everything's going to kind of be the, the same tension once we, uh, once we start, the wheel starts taking shape. Um, you know, you want it to be pretty round and pretty evenly tensioned when you put it in the truing stand for the first time because it makes everything a lot easier. Three, two, three, four. In a little bit. Okay, going around. Okay, all right, so uh, here we have it. Um, things are kind of in suspension here. Bang, 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 bang. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the about the right amount of looseness that you want at this point. Um, you got something round. Again, I'm gonna start with the valve hole just opposite me. Get my twist right, so we're not gonna be crossing. And there you have your twist. Um, and if you kind of push down, then all of your nipples will get seated, um, on their heads, not, you know, stuck in the rims. And you can kind of get an idea of if you have the right spoke length. Um, whereas, you know, the last time I built this wheel, um, I knew at this point things were a little long. Um, but I went through and I thought maybe I'd get away with it, but I wasn't able to. Anyway, now, um... It doesn't really matter a whole lot um, which holes you use because you only have um, the one option. It doesn't matter where you start, um, but these are going to be outbound spokes because um, all the other ones are inbound and goes every other one. Um, and then we are building a three cross wheel. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that um, with uh, my spoke length calculation. Um, you can do two cross, three cross, four cross. Since this is 40 hole, large flange, all of that, three cross is the best we're gonna do. Um, so, that means we're gonna cross this one, this one, and this one, and it's gonna go over, over, under. Over, over, under. Get a little bit of a bend. And then, uh, since you know that this one, these are all gonna be all crossing spokes, um, you do this one, skip a hole, then the next one, and that's where your, um, this spoke goes to. So you can see here, I can't get all the way through. Um, and this will iron itself out, I hope. Um, seems like these are short. I should have gone with 252. Let's see if that's true. Anyway, I got this fancy tool. You can use an awl, you can use a nail, or anything that you can fashion um, that you can just kind of grab. This was made by um, Efficient Velo Tools. Um, you can order them online, I believe, and they're pretty amazing. If you're gonna do a lot of them, I'd use them. And then uh, you can just thread them in manually. Once you get that first one in, you can kinda, um, you know, wiggle things, find your equilibrium. Um, I'm gonna do one that's sorta opposite, um, just to give the wheel 
shape and even like not tension, but I do this. It makes it more, everything a little more stable and prevents the nipples from, you know, these nipples are going to want to kind of crawl back into the rim and then get stuck and then everything feels weird. And this just, you know, now you have a fairly stable wheel. Um, but, you know, the wonderful thing about this is every step along the way, we've got 10 of them because it's a 40 hole wheel. So I'm going to go around and uh, do all of the drive side outbounders crossing spokes. Okay, so we got all the crossing spokes on our drive side done. And um, I think that 250 is gonna be perfect just by experience and feel here. Um, yeah, that was good. Um, hope I don't eat those words. Yeah, you know, you can kind of eyeball it and we're good to go. Um, so same thing on this side, um, nothing new to report, but, uh, oh, no, <laughs> it's uh, a little opposite. So these are going to be inbound, which is a little bit trickier. You got to kind of wiggle. I don't know if you can see that too well, but you kind of got to wiggle it through and spread these crossing spokes out and then you know things get a little bit trickier everything's a little hairier um, so we're gonna go one two three so it's under under over on this side just a little more awkwardness um, this is the part where I'm sure there's a better method um, I know some people just cross the spokes like they build wheels with the crossed spokes around um i don't know this is just the method that i was taught many years ago and i you know i build like four or five wheels a year you know i mean it's not that many um so it's not a big deal for me to do it this way i find it kind of relaxing meditative sometimes i'll put on um you know a movie or something and you know or old episodes of the office or something i can just zone out to have in the background and build it in front of the TV. Sometimes I make my own movies while I build wheels. Yeah, so you can see I'm spreading these spokes. I'm gonna try to get this in at an angle where it hits, yeah, and so it can just drop in. You know, less bending is better, um, but now I'm at a weird angle. And you don't want to drag your spoke across the anodized rim and cause all kinds of scratches. Although this is already a blemished rim and doesn't really matter and the customer doesn't care. This is going to be a longer reach, but we're good. All right, that wheel is laced. And you can see, you know, because we left three threads all the way around, it's a little loose, but that's like perfect. I mean, this is gonna really lace up well. It's 
going to be a very beefy, solid wheel when we're done. Um, uh, yeah, let's bring her up to tension, huh? Um, make it a wheel. Okay, so here we are in the truing stand. Um, get our wheel in here. You can see everything's really loose still. I haven't touched it. Um, this truing stand I have set up to be pretty dish. So, um, and dish is how centered the rim is in comparison with your axle nuts, the lock nuts. Um, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is just add tension. Um, I have um, this nipple driver, that's what it's called. Great name for a tool. Great name for a rock band, too. I've always thought uh, that uh, nipple driver would be a good name for a rock band. Um, so one thing you can do and uh, is, with your nipple driver here, I'm gonna make an adjustment. See what I'm doing here. Um, you can come at it from the backside, and I just wind them until the tool bottoms out, which is actually quite a bit. Maybe I don't want to do that on this wheel. I'm gonna do it till the tool bottoms out and then back it up a smidge. No, it's not going to let me. Uh, by the way, I am starting from the first spoke after the valve hole. Um, yeah. We're just going to count here. So with the nipple driver, we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go all the way around the wheel. One, two, three, four. Just add a little bit of tension. Just really sneak up on it. You know, if you're building the same wheel over and over again, and you know that your spoke links and everything, everything's just exactly perfect, um, I'm sure there's tips and tricks that people have on how to, you know, really just get it up to tension on the first try. But every time I build a wheel, it seems like it's a new journey and it helps if you just sneak up on it a little bit at a time. Okay, well, the camera died and uh, I just got a whole lot done. Well, not a whole lot but I've been bringing it up to initial tension and I'm just about to finish up here. Um, things got a little too much, too tight, a little too much tension for the nipple driver to work anymore. So I'm onto a spoke wrench. Um, so maybe four turns was a bit too much. I generally don't like to have this much tension yet, um, but here I am back to my uh, valve hole. Here, I'll prove it to you. Say, can you see that? Um, ooh, not looking too bad. There's a little bit of a hop, a couple little wobbles. Um, you know, go through and just kind of squeeze all of the parallel spokes. Um, see if anything feels funny. You know, like this one feels pretty loose. So I'm just going to, you know, this is just going by feel now. Um, just to kind of get everything as, you know, equal as you can, you know, you just kind of want to start everything from the same place. Um, give yourself the best fighting chance to have an easy tensioning experience. You know, if anything's really tight at this point or really loose at this point, it's just going to cause problems down the road. Um, now, something that I do move that aside um, and you kind of got to be careful here that you're not marring anything um, this has a nice solid axle so you just rest your wheel down and then go through 
with a soft mallet. And, oh yeah, see like this spoke is totally wrong. I really messed up there. I don't know how that happened. I'm glad I saw it. We're gonna replace this spoke. All right. See, I make mistakes. Good thing I caught it. You know, when I hire people, which I don't really do all that often, but I've done it. Um, I ask for two main characteristics. And one is to have the confidence to make decisions and go for it. And then also have the responsibility to admit mistakes and correct them. Um, oh yeah, this is very problematic. We're going to have to take this one out too. You know, because I still make mistakes. I have no idea how that happened. That was weird. Never done that before. It's kind of hard to predict. But everything's all twisted up. Lucky I didn't break something. All right. So... That one's going to cross over there, and this one's going to, you know, I'm, I'm briefly, briefly, um, I'm kind of half remembering when I did it. It's during the time lapse. Hopefully it's time lapsed. Go back to the time lapse and slow it down. You'll see me pause and think about something and make a decision. And I guarantee you it's the wrong decision. I got a little confused by the pattern. And it just didn't feel right. And it didn't feel right. Because it wasn't right. It was wrong. Wrong. Okay, back on track. As I was saying, rest it on its axle. Go through... And all of the outbound spokes, all of the outbound spokes, you just kind of pound the tension out. You've got the J-bend in the spokes coming over the flange. And, uh, you know, you just want to kind of take the, the tension out of the spokes right there. Find more of an equilibrium. Flip it over and do the other side too. I'm just checking all my my crosses now to just make sure I didn't brain fart multiple times. All right. Brain fart. Brain farts happen. Double check your work, folks. All right, we're going to go through and feel things again. Oh, this 40-hole wheel just feels funny. Everything's tight. Squeaky. Um, you know, a nice thing to do, I don't put it on the threads, but just the nipple and the interface of the rim, take a little tri-flow or something and just put a little drop on each one. Can't tell if I'm all the way around. Hopefully it's obvious. It is because I started at the hole. You know, I do things just automatically. Wipe off any extras. Now, I'm showing a whole lot of over this way, over to the right. Um, something's either too tight or too loose in here. I'm going to try to find the, this one feels pretty tight. So we're going to loosen it. Even though I'm trying to, I'm bringing things up to attention right now. Um, I want to start from an equilibrium. Now I'm kind of doing like a really low tension true, going through and I 
guess I can't really talk and do this at the same time. That's what I'm learning here. So much of it's done by ear, you know, and you can hear it, I'm sure, right? Yeah, you can hear it. Um, the microphone's right next to it. I'm going to zoom in. All right, so that's hitting on the right side. So we're going to loosen a right spoke, tighten a left one. Tighten a left one. It's just barely hitting on the right, so I'm just going to tighten a left one. Woo, that's pretty good. All right, barely hitting on the right. I'm going to, but this one, this right one feels pretty loose. Um, and all this, you know, I'm splitting hairs at this point. I don't need to be putting this much effort into it. We're going to check for hops now. This is the up and down. Yeah, there's big hops in here. So we're going to figure that out. So this is a flat spot, they call it. So I want to lengthen these spokes and maybe loosen a couple up here. Uh, I mean, wait, I want to, yeah, I want to loosen these spokes. Yeah, you can feel them. And this I'm kind of eyeballing. I mean, the flat spots you have to see. You know, the, the high spots, um, it'll tell you. It'll rub on the tool. Yeah, so there's a high spot. We'll just go through and tighten these to kind of pull the rim up away, pull that high spot out. Big high spot there. And we're just, we do all the spokes in the high spot. So it doesn't really matter what side of the rim. Yeah, this one was really loose. So that's probably what was causing it. And I'm sneaking up on all this, you know, we're not even at tension yet. We're just getting things round and, you know, really, it's like, almost like we're shaping the wheel. The pro wheel builders, I, I assume at this point, you know, like they just know how to lace things up so you can avoid having to do too much of this. I've never really gotten to that point. I've built a lot of wheels, but it's not like an everyday thing. And I don't retain knowledge or technique, you know, I, I, I got the gist of it. Like I know how it all goes together and how it's supposed to work, but all the tricks and efficiency and that kind of stuff leaves me. That's pretty good. Get you a shot of that. There. All right, so we got a couple more little fine adjustments to do here to get things round. And this will all slightly change as I bring things up to tension. Okay, so um, things are relatively round. Things are relatively straight, um, not too wobbly. Um, things are definitely loose. So we're going to go through and do, I think, like one turn all the way around. Oh yeah, so now we're up to tension. Um, starting to turn into a solid wheel. I just go around and squeeze everything and, you know, make sure 
nothing's out of place along the way. Looking for a loose spoke here and there, something that really feels different. Um, I'm gonna go through and take out some wobbles and some hops again. Um, you know, these are just fine little micro adjustments along the way. It's all, I'm showing it all on the right side. So loose on the right side, tighten the left side spokes. Oh, yeah, now it's rubbing on the left side over here. So this, uh, okay. I start paying attention. Some minor technical difficulties. New camera. New channel. Don't know what I'm doing. We learn as we go. Um, just doing a little side to side touch up here before we actually measure some tension. Okay. So this is all feeling pretty good. I think I could add a little more tension, you know, go a half a turn all the way around, maybe quarter turn. Just but we're going to check. Um, here's my uh, spoke tensioner tension meter. Um, the park tool TM one. Um, I looked up on their little chart. I think if we're somewhere in the um, 20 to 21 range, you know, we're okay. We're in the ballpark. Yeah. So I'm just kind of measuring a few here and we're right at about 22, 22, 22, 20. Okay. So we are definitely in the ballpark. Um, we could add some tension just cause I feel it, but we don't need to. Um, I'm going to start at my valve hole and this is where we use our senses. I'm going to go with the right side here. I'm going to pluck them. I don't know. Hopefully you can hear it. Those sound about the same. I'm plucking crossing spokes. So one was kind of high and one was kind of low. So I'm just going to loosen one a smidge and tighten the other a smidge. Those were just a hair off. And all I'm trying to do is get the crossing spokes to be the same tension. And I'm right handed. So we're gonna go through and do the same thing on the other side. Right-handed, flip it around. Don't um, Some of these are just little micro adjustments. This is how I do it. One of the mechanics I used to work with at the shop. Um, one of the best mechanics around, I think. Guy just the machine. Every time he threw the wheel, he would go turn the stereo down and uh, pluck spokes and do it by ear. So I went through and did all that plucking, and things are looking really straight right now. Um, this thing is dialed. Everything seems to be within tension. Um, you know, nothing's really out of line. Everything feels good. I'm pretty impressed with this wheel so far. There's a little bit of a hop. So I'm going to try to draw that out quick, just with a little bit of tweaking. It can be improved. So just Go around and just improve the shape a little bit here and there. It's 
see the adjustments we're making here are so small that you know you're not really changing the overall tension of things. All right, now I'm going to do the dish and I'm going to trust it's off by a little, just a smidge. Um, and that's because, you know, the actual spoke length, when you calculate it properly, um, it wanted, you know, an extra half a millimeter for the non-drive side, um, which of course we don't have. So, um, you know, we're going to kind of do that here. In a perfect world, we just go and tighten everything on the um, drive side and bring the rim over to that side a little bit. But it's not a perfect world. And I'm going to go through just little bit by little bit. Actually, no, I am going to do that. I'm going to go through and tighten everything on this side just like, I don't know, what is that? Not even a quarter turn, an eighth of a turn. Just bring everything over a smidge. calling the channel bike farmer because you know how farmers are always like doing everything fixing their tractors replacing gutters repairing a faulty electrical circuit in the barn you know all of the all of the things um, that's kind of how my life is you know as a solopreneur bike shop owner um, you know, if you really want to set out and make a living for yourself, try, start charging for your services, you got to do it all. You know, you, you don't have an employer or a landlord or anybody to fall back on. Self-reliance, I think they call it. Yeah, baby. Let's, oh, let's make a, an improvement here. I mean, you want to talk about splitting hairs. We are really splitting hairs at this point. But I kind of want to get a shot, a close-up of this. And I don't want anybody in the comments having too much to say. So I'm checking the round one last time for high spots and flat spots. Now we're going to check side to side. Man, these velocity rims are nice. I really like them. I, I have velocity stuff on all my personal bikes. You know, if you can just have them build the wheels. I mean, that's what I do. I just have them build them and I buy them straight from them. I have them build them in their wheel department. I considered sending this hub to them to have them do this, but um, when I look, yeah, we can do some close-ups here. Um, I think the um, spoke length is perfect. Tension is delicious and even all the way around. Man, that's a good wheel. wheel. All right, we're going to get some close-ups. All right, here we are putting it all out there. Look at that. I'm okay with that. It's good. You can kind of see it's got a little bit of a hip hopper in there. You know, we can make it make noise. You know, just barely. 
Bring it in on the side. You know, here, we'll come up and then come in. Oh, man, that's pretty good though. The hub's rolling pretty smooth. It's a little loose. That's why it's rolling so smooth. Eh, it's loose in a couple spots. We'll, we'll make an adjustment there. All right, very pleased. Okay. Oh, we've got another little issue here. I'm going to be consistent. Um, I don't like to do this very often, but uh, he had a shader valve on the old rim. I bet he wants a shader valve on the new one. Of course, this is drilled for Presta, so we're going to ream that out. Um, i got to go find the reamer. Um, and, yeah, I think the 19 millimeter Velox tape is going to be great for this. Uh, let me go grab the reamer. All right, we've got our reamer. Um, you know, the problem that we're solving here is to get... And as uh, we've got a little Presta valve hole, I don't know if you can see it or not. We're just gonna make it bigger for the Schrader valve. Hmm. That's not really cutting too straight. Might be time for a new reamer. Go grab a drill bit. All right, I found a 5 16 drill bit in my electric drill here. That cleans things up quite a bit. That's probably very loud for you. Warning. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna clean it up with the rat tail file here. Cleaned up, all right there. Now, the rim tape also is, got a little hole in it, needs to be bigger. So I'll do that, I fold it in half. Take my little scissors. And I cut it bigger. That should work. Starting at the valve hole. And we just go around and make it stick to the inside. Always use cloth tape on a double walled rim. Single walled rims are fine using the rubber rim strips, but rubber rim strips don't work well on double walled rims. They just poke right through the holes and eventually you'll start getting flats. Just a little bit of overlap. See that? camera's kind of in the dark there. All right, we got that put together. I'm gonna look for a logo on the side of this tire. It's a non-directional tire. 
right side. Put the tire on. Uh-oh. It's a tight fit, folks. Give it a little bit of help. <laughs> oh, hey, look. We've got a we've got a label on that tire. I'm going to on this one just because let's do Let's do that. We're going to line everything up like that. You know, I think that'll be a little more fun. Nice little touch. Make it look deliberate, like we know what we're doing. Like we do stuff on purpose. Everything has a purpose. You know, I'm mindful that I've uh, drilled holes in this rim and there's metal shards all over the place now. Um, you know, like I just let the tube kind of rest on the floor where it's not that clean. You know, you don't want those metal shards ending up inside. All right. Are we taking bets yet on whether or not this tube is going to hold air? I think it held air originally. It's been sitting around for a while. This has been a project on the back burner for longer than I'm going to admit on camera. I've been on a bit of a journey with this wheel project. It hasn't gone very smoothly. <laughs> Today has gone pretty smoothly, but that's because I've made all the mistakes. And here I think I'm about to discover, oh no, our hole's just barely big enough to get that valve stem through. It's a nice tight fit. I like that. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, tube's got a hole in it. Back up five yards and punt. We don't need to show you. Okay. So I did decide uh, once I got the everything apart, I decided to um, just make the valve hole just a tiny bit bigger um, so it's a little bit tighter fit not too much or a little bit looser fit it was a little tight before and i was just thinking about the next guy you know um we're okay here um this actually looks pretty good with the black rim and the white wall and you know i mean it's, it's kind of a blue it was a blemished blemished wheel or rim from Velocity, so something, they weren't happy about it for some reason. Maybe it was supposed to be black and turned out a little bit blue. But like I said, the customer didn't really care. Um, you know, this hub was a smidge loose in the stand. So we are going to make a quick adjustment there. Um, try not to smoosh my mic. Um, I'll bring you in a little bit closer to show the hub adjustment. Um, if you can see, we've got the the cone on the inside here with the cone wrench. That's a 15 millimeter, um, generally speaking, on a rear hub. And then the uh, the lock nuts are generally 17. And if you loosen the lock nut and back that off. I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to loosen this way up. We'll leave the other side locked and loaded. And you can, this is like really tight now. 
And this isn't the best feeling hub, but I wouldn't expect much out of it. It's just kind of a Taiwanese thing. Um, but yeah, as suspected, things are pretty dry in there. So I've got my grease gun. These things never work for me. And today is no different. So instead, we'll just use marine grease. Get a big glob of it. And just cram it in there. You know, if you're going to go through and loosen things up at this point, make the adjustment, might as well throw some grease in there. And I just, you know, grease is cheap. I've got a lot of it. So I just put a lot in there on both sides. And that'll give us a fighting chance. So generally with hub adjustments, it's a solid axle, nice and beefy. Everything's really beefy on this hub. Um, still, you know, I've got it now. Things feel pretty smooth and straight. Actually, man, I'm glad I added that grease because it's way better. Um, but I would say at this point, things feel tight. But that's okay because once you lock down your lock nut, um, this cone's going to back off a quarter turn or so, and that's going to loosen the whole system. And you're just setting the preload on the bearings, and that's really good. But it's a little, it's a little loose. So I'm going to loosen that a crack. So now the whole system's loose. I'm going to tighten this one back here, and I'm really tightening this cone down now. And um, the preload on the bearings is going to be really tight, tighter than you want to admit. And then I'm going to lock that down a little bit. And get my wrenches opposing. Now I haven't really tightened things down a, a ton yet. I'm just testing it. And it's moving pretty smoothly. And I'm hoping that when I really crank on it now, I'm just going to tighten these two together. That's going to loosen. Ah, uh, see, there's still a little bit of play. Man, it was so close. All right. It's not just exactly perfect. Um, sometimes on these old used, cheaper hubs, these adjustments, you have to just accept it to be good enough without, you know, totally overhauling everything. And it's just, there's not enough value here to justify that. We're going to use this cheater pliers. Now I'm tightening both lock nuts against each other, but not much. Sixteenth of a turn? Not even. I mean, just a smidge. Because um, it's a pretty fine adjustment at this point. Ooh. That's pretty good, folks. I'm winning. Now we're gonna give it, give her the onions. Yeah, I mean, any, there's a tiny, tiny smidge of play in one spot. Anything else though is just gonna be problematic. Um, you don't wanna go any looser then. I'm gonna just put the wheel up in the stand back you up here throw the wheel back up in the stand sometimes when you get the um, the tire on put a bunch of pressure in it um, the spokes will settle a little bit more um, and so things change. So we're just going to do a kind of a final double check here. And now I'm just checking side to side. And it's just off a smidge, which, you know, 
I expect it, otherwise I wouldn't have put it in the stand. Okay, that's touched up pretty good. Um, we'll, uh, I do one of these. This is another way to just get the spokes and stuff to kind of settle, find an equilibrium. You can, you can do that, just apply pressure all the way around and just, you know, if anything's just kind of not in its home, this kind of stuff will knock some sense into it. Put that back up in the stand. Yeah, things didn't move much at all, which means we got a pretty good build. You know, I'm happy. I'm okay with this. I am gonna love it when this customer picks this wheel up. I just have it behind me. They bought a tandem from me. Too. When they dropped this off, I ended up selling them one. Um, I wonder what happened to the axle nuts. I wonder if he's got them. The actual the axle, axle nuts. I wrote an L and an R and Sharpie on the inside of the hub. That's gone now. The guy that makes this, I can't, I've been trying to think of his name all day and uh, it's just escaping me, but he owns um, Efficient Velo Tools and he, he designed this tool and he also designed this bike stand. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Play with my new camera. You know, but EVT, efficient Velo tools. Um, anyway, he used to be a service manager and then he went on to make bike tools. He does a really good job. He's got a machine shop and I mean, this, his stuff is just the best. Um, and he's a really interesting guy. And uh, he gives a presentation on how to run a service shop and one of the things he asks or he claims is that the Schrader valve cap is, you know, the most important bike part. Because if you give a bike back to a customer without valve caps, they're going to look at it and think you're not a professional. They're going to think you did a shoddy job. It doesn't matter what your job did. You could have done a great job on this wheel build. If you don't have a valve cap on it, they're going to be like, why'd you overlook that? Um, very, very good point. The practical... Um, reasonable, you know, critically thinking self that I have in myself says, what a bunch of bullshit, but he's right. We're done. Time to call the customer and move on from the bike project that's been looming over my head for longer than I'm going to admit. Thank you, we'll see you at the next video.